All right, hey guys, welcome again to Fire Alarms and Such, and it is time to learn some basic programming on a Simplex 4010 Fire Alarm Control Panel. This is a combination of two of the requested videos that I got from that survey. Once again, that survey is still up on my channel, either in the About tab or clicking the little Google G under my cover photo if you are on a computer. So, we're going to try and do the best that we can. I'm going to try and show you as much as I feel comfortable showing you. I will be mainly focusing on two different access levels today. We're going to be working on level one and level three. I may jump into level four real quick, um, but I'm not going to be spending a whole much, a whole lot of time in level four because that's some real advanced stuff and gets you pretty much anywhere into the panel. Now, wait a minute. What's all this level jargon I'm talking about? Well, Simplex uses a system of levels to have different access in the panel. Each level is, helps if I go into my menu, is, is passcode protected. So in order to get into each different level, you need to have a different passcode, except for level one. Level one requires no passcode. All it needs is some way of getting into the panel, whether that be your B key opening up the door or your B key putting it in an enunciator. Basically, you just need a B key. So if we actually open up the panel today, we're going to start on level one. That is the most basic level. Level two gives you a little bit more access than level one, requires a login. Everything after level one requires a login. Level three gives you a pretty moderate amount of access to the panel, but not everything. And then level four, when you log into that, the panel will actually go into trouble because it is in service mode. Because that is, you are adding points, deleting points, reconfiguring points, reconfiguring the panel, doing a factory reset on the panel. That's like massive, like you're making big changes to the panel. So we are going to start with level one. The first thing that we're going to jump to real quick is this button, this guy. This is our function button. If you hit it, a little menu comes up. You have lamp test, display current time, and end of list. This is pretty much all you can do in level one. If you hit lamp test, every light comes on, every digit on the screen comes on. Just basically a self check for the panel. And then display, you know, current date and time is just current time. That's what it is. Also in level one, you can acknowledge alarms, acknowledge supervisory, acknowledge trouble, silence alarms, and reset the panel. All are right here in your emergency operating instructions. Other things you can do in level one, you can view points. Control is not really a good word. You can view points, let's say if we want to look at, okay, a pull station. You can't disable or enable it. You can basically just see how it's doing. Like that's pretty much it. Other than that, you can log in, you can view your historical logs, view what software the panel's sitting at, run a kind of a quick diagnostic, um, okay, I don't have a card, Duh. I don't have a network card in here, oh no, and run a quick diagnostic, that was the last thing. That's pretty much it for level one. We are going to now log into level three. That's a very common level to be logged into on a simplex panel. So, going to menu, going to log in, and we're going to input the password. We're just going to put you over here. And we are now logged in to level three. So, we're going to start with the function button again. We're going to go to function, and look at that. We can do a manual evacuation. So, you can set it to on. And just for fun, we'll throw the door up, because why not? And hitting manual evac, we'll turn it on, we'll start a fire drill, basically. And like that, you can silence and reset alarms. Anything you can do in the previous level, you can do in the next level up plus more. So it's not like an only this or that. Anything you can do in level two, you can do in level three, plus all the extra stuff you can do in level three. So we are going to go back, oops, 
to our function button. So we have a fire drill basically. Setting off, uh, turning off your disconnect to like, you know, your city phone line. Come on, your city phone line. You can bypass a control point, which is like kind of like disabling a pole station, but kind of different. You can bypass your elevator capture and uh, what's the word? Oh my gosh, the, the fire controls of the elevator that, you know, send it to the fire floor and whatever. Disable your door holder. So if you want to run a test on the panel, but you don't want all the doors closing, you disable your door holder. And of course, run a lamp test, earth fault latch, and then you have these three user defined, or just these two user defined keys where you can set them to do kind of whatever you want. I haven't really played around with them yet. And then your display current time, and there's the end of the list. In the menu, you can control and view points. This time you can actually go in and you can disable a pole station if you need to. So if I were to set it to disable, it's going to give me a trouble. We'll acknowledge that. And now, got my other keys. That's why I'm using my other key ring. If I come over here to pole station two and open it, nothing happens. And I didn't have to touch anything wire wise. Now, there is still live power going to the pole station. So don't just think because you're disabling it that wires aren't live because wires are live. We're going to wait because it has to do a little countdown before it will re-enable it. So that way, like, you know, it's going to. So if you didn't mean to enable it and, you know, the point's an alarm because you enabled the wrong thing and then you'd be evacuating the whole building. It gives you a little bit of a countdown. So seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, click, done. So now if we actually go back to our menu, control view points, log in, log out, view your logs, view your software, view your diagnostics, set your date and set your date and time. That's a new one. So that way when you do a cold start of a panel, your panel loses time. You have to log into level three to set the current time and date, or else you will have a trouble until you actually set the time and date. Setting a walk test, you've seen walk tests. Setting a true test, I don't have the addressable alarms for that, so we're not even, it, it's a whole big thing I may talk about later. Basic programming, viewing reports, just reports are basically what the panel is sending to the printer. If we go into programming, you are going to get a trouble because now if any, oops, if any pull station or anything is pulled, the panel's not going to care. It's going to know that it did that, but it doesn't care. This is what allows you to change like a pull station, changing that point number to like a smoke detector. So here, we'll do edit ID net point, we'll add it to, you can change the point label, or my bad, you can only do, you can only change point labels, my bad. And you can only edit points, you can't, I'm sorry, you can't see the screen. You can't add points, you can't delete points, you can only edit what it's called. So you can change the name, that's it. That's configure points. Restore, that's like a restore to your previous settings. Save your settings. And that's it. And it's going to go out of trouble. Reports, and that is it for level three. Now, we are going to jump into level four real quick because a request was on how to add a point. I kind of talked about it in setting device address, that setting device address video, I actually renamed it to setting an ID net address point and adding it to your Simplex 4010, but I didn't go too in depth into it, so I'm going to do that now. So we're going to menu from any login level. We're going to go to login, and we are going to log in to my level four, and then we're going to get a trouble, a service mode trouble, because this is oh my God, someone has complete access to your panel. Do you know that? So that gets sent to the central station. So you could do everything else that you have been able to do before, all of it. 
you can do quick configuration, which is going to, again, give you a kind of a trouble. And it allows you to, ah, oh, glad my fingernail hit the relay. But uh, whew, I have reflexes because I'm so afraid I'm going to hit that battery terminal. Whew, that was scary. And you can edit your system options. That's things like, how do you want your NAC cadence to be? What, hap what do you want the door to do when you know, there's no power? Or what do you want the alarms to do when there's no power? Just basically system preferences. Um, how long do you want the panel to sit before you can physically silence it? How long do you want the panel to wait before it silence itself? Just basic things like that. So that's same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing. Went over that. Programming. We now actually have some pretty beefy programming. This will actually allow you to add, edit, and delete points. So in your level four, this is the only thing I'm really going to be talking about in level four because someone asked and it's not, you're not going to screw with anything really. Just don't do it on someone else's stuff. But if you hit enter. And if you're adding a pull station, you go under here. Adding a smoke detector, you go under here. So we go to pull stations and add ID net point, And then it will give you a list of your next available devices. And then once you do is you'll hit enter. You'll set the, devo you'll set the, bleh, the device type, the point type, and the point label if you want. And then when you are done, it'll say, do you want to restore configuration, exit without saving, or save configuration? You're going to want to save your configuration and then the panel will do a cold start and then your settings will be saved and then you're going to have to input the date and time. So, oh, yeah, you can uh, look at your relays, look at your NACs, stuff on the panel, your lists, use your defined LEDs, those are these here. What else we got? Got configuring your cards, that's pretty big your system options, your custom control, that's very application specific. No one really hobbyist is going to be going in that one. You're changing your uh, access level, what can be done, your passwords, your passwords, and then like basically restoring, saving, yes. So along with programming, you can upload download software from a computer, your reports, and do a panel restart. That's actually what I'm going to be doing next because this trouble, even if I log out, will not go away until the panel restarts, at least it won't on mine. We're going to do a warm start, which actually keeps the date and time, but restarts the computer. So it's going to give me warning, warning, you are about to restart the panel. And we're going to say yes. We're going to restart. Panel is booting up. And that's going to give me a warm start trouble and say check date and time. It sees that it's normal and my trouble goes away immediately. So there you go. You now have basic programming knowledge of a Simplex 4010 fire alarm control panel. I really hope you guys liked it. I'm glad someone asked this because I wouldn't have really thought about doing it because I don't know how many people have 4010s or really any simplex panel that kind of follows the same way and if you guys actually cared or not like i don't know so thank you whoever requested that i hope that this fulfilled your request and thank you guys for watching and as always have a wonderful day